Hi, I'm Luke, the Climate Change Research Team Manager, and welcome to the Professor Berg Show on Channel 14. This is Steven, the team's climate scientist. Will the health of humans be affected by climate change? Well, what do you guys think? Our research team believes that the human health will be affected by climate, and how the climate of change is the characteristic of weather condition in place for a long period of time. This could be a huge issue for humans because different climates could affect the way plants and food grow. First, we'll start with Stephen. Okay, so what is my first question? Okay, so what is GMO? GMO is genetically modified organisms. A GMO is, to simply put it, when scientists take a normal food and then inject the DNA of another organism into the food to make a new food. Some examples of popular genetically modified foods are Doritos, Kellogg's, Bisquick, Betty Crocker, General Mills, Duncan Hines, and many others. The problem is that the fact when there's a GMO in a certain food, it is normally not labeled on the packaging, so people don't even know what they're eating sometimes. Thank you for sharing. I had no idea, and I'm sure some of our viewers will be shocked by that information also. Are you ready for another tough question? Yes, I am. How does human activity affect the increase of malaria? With the human and desert climate in Africa and human activity emitting greenhouse gases, the global temperature will increase and consequently, this will cause the humidity to rise greatly. This means that the climate is adjusting to the advantage of mosquitoes. With a humid climate, mosquitoes will bite us and their population will increase. And in places like Africa that don't have many medicines, people will continue to become infected and die from these mosquito-borne illnesses. There has been many cases of malaria in the state of Massachusetts as well. Since we are in a subtropic climate zone, there are many mosquitoes around during the spring and summer, so our chances of malaria are larger as to a region of polar climate. Thank you. Lastly, what can we do to improve or prevent these problems with malaria and anogamos? If we can decrease the production of factories and human activity a lot, less greenhouse gases will be, will be released into the atmosphere, making the climate less warm for mosquitoes to strike with malaria. We need more fertile land to be preserved for farming and not factories, so there will be more land clear to start growing native foods again like corn beans, etc. Goodbye, Stephen. Anno, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. This is Christy, the environmental scientist. Hello, Christy. Your question is, how does the ozone layer protect us from the sun? Well, the ozone layer protects us because it absorbs most of the sun's rays. A way we can stop this is not mu using as much chemicals like chlorofluorocarbons, commonly known as CFCs, halons, carbon tetrachloride, methyl chloroform, and methyl bromide into the atmosphere. The secondhand cigarette smoke can cause pollution too. Natural sources like volcano ash and wildfire smoke can pollute the air, which will affect the ozone layer dramatically over time, which needs to stop. Air pollution is mostly found where things are being concentrated, like large cities. Thank you very much. Now how, now how will the weather conditions change the way we grow food? Um, if we get too much water or too much sun, the plants will either drown in the water or dry out. The only way to really stop this is by growing plants indoors, but some places aren't able to do that. Droughts occur mostly in the South and Midwest, and farmers who are in those parts won't, able, won't be able to grow crops such as corn. When there is a drought and it's where we get food, it causes us to pay more for that since there's not a lot of it. In California, the drought takes place. The prices are rising 3.5% this year. If we keep paying more, people will lose money, which will cause economical problems. Thank you, Christy. This is Danielle, the conservation scientist. Now we will ask a couple of questions to Danielle. What map shows weather conditions that will cause effects of our environment? Maps that show weather conditions that will change our environment is maps that show the weather of that day and the wind currents. Weather, when we watch the news, it shows us whether it will be sunny or cold. The days that are sunny, our plants won't get as wet, so we would have to water them ourselves. When we do that, we use too much water and it can be over, like, filled. And then it would dry out after because it used too much. In California, as Christy said, it's a drought. 
so we have to be conserved of our water. Thank you, Daniel. Now, how does water vapor affect human health? Water vapor can either be solidified or in a liquid state. The more water we use, like as people use macaroni, they boil too much water and wait for it to evaporate. It can go into the air current and change it. Change it. Thank you. Lastly, what can we do to improve these problems with the water vapor? Well, when people use too much, they have to wait for it to go away, like evaporate. So we would have to start measuring it, and researchers from MIT have been investigating it, and they have fog harvesters, and they can produce water from thin air. Thanks. And I will start doing that more. Great. How does aerosol affect human health? Aerosol can affect human health because the sprays, it can go into people's lungs and mess up their breathing. So we can use solidified air fresheners instead. In conclusion, human health is at, at risk. From climate change, these are solutions which we have started that can decrease the risks for human health. We need to decrease the level of human activity. Thank you, Daniel, for your important information. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Today, we will be interviewing three people about how climate could affect the food supply. Please welcome climate scientist Madeline Mutar. Hi. Thank you for having me. The climate will affect our food supply in some scary ways. If it gets too cold, our food might not be able to grow at all. And if it gets too hot and dry, we would have to change our crops so that we can grow food in Massachusetts. So there would be less, a loss of crops for a long time if the climate keeps changing like it is now? Yes, and either global warming or global cooling would cause lots of crops to not be able to grow and we would lose human activity on Earth. We would not be able to grow a lot of food and plants that we are growing now. So this was a picture when I was in Chile. That's cool. So what are some real world examples of how the Earth was affected before? Well, the Little Ice, ice Age and the Medieval Warm Period play a big factor towards how our Earth is changing. That's not very good. What does food supply have to do with conservation? Hi everybody, I'm glad to be here today. You see, conservation has a huge effect on our food because we won't have enough food to supply the whole population. So what are some solutions you can offer to the born community? Actually, there are a ton of them, so let me read off them real quick. Some real life examples are walking, riding your bike, carpooling, and using public transportation, like taking the bus because everyone driving their own cars consumes a lot of gas, which is a major cause to global climate change. Another real life example is instead of burning coal and supporting companies invested in fossil fuels, use energy efficient appliances or a technological fire pit, which uses no gas, but heats you up. Get an electric car, which uses no carbon gases, but just charges it. Also, people could start growing their own gardens during the spring and get their own food supply. Lastly, buying energy efficient appliances for your home will help. We have the technology to make a difference. We just need to use it. Thank you very much. I'm in Brazil right now. You can see this climate is changing a lot. It's changing up to nine degrees. That might not seem a lot, but it is. Up to 730 years as a long time. Thank you. And what are we doing to make that worse? Well, in Brazil, they're cutting down large quantities of forests. This causes less carbon dioxide. <laughs> it's being converted to oxygen, and the carbon dioxide is a key part of what causes our climate to be warm. So what are some real world examples of how the Earth was affected before? Well, there was a real, like a really, really big fire in Minnesota. It killed 453 people. 
Some of these businesses cut down to trees so they have land to plant the crops, such as General Mills. General Mills is a big company. Wait, where's the other paper? Yeah, they've been cutting down rainforest to grow soil to get their own use. They make products like yogurt, yogurt's good. Dry soups, that's disgusting. Inside meals such as brain yogi, for instance, it comes from General Mills. And I am done for today. Have a good day. <laughs> well, that is good to know. Thank you, and now I won't be buying these products anymore. Right. <laughs> now we're talking to Colby Yankee, the conservation scientist who is in Antarctica. <coughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? Now we're going to talk to Colby Yankee, the conservation scientist who is in Antarctica. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our group was asked to see how climate change affects animal life. We easily came to the conclusion that many species are seriously in danger of becoming extinct or having their homes destroyed over the time span of a few hundred years. If we continue increasing climate, mainly by excessive amounts of greenhouse gases being produced, along with the deforestation of people's habitat. Now for Bridget, our climate scientist. Bridget, what is climate change impacting most in our world? Climate change is likely to result in increasing sea levels and get bigger risk of fires. The sea levels are really only rising at a drastic rate all around Antarctica, and their surrounding glaciers causing them to melt and destroy habitat. Where is climate change affecting the animals the most? Antarctica is a large part of where climate change is impacting animals like the polar bears. Of our 22,000 polar bears today, by 2050, about two-thirds of the amount will be gone. Bridget, what gases are impacting climate change the most? If greenhouse gases don't reduce, then 25% of our animals will go extinct, 90% of birds, two-thirds of polar bears, and 50% of other animals that are all endangered. What are some other animals that will be affected by climate increase? Polar bears, turtles, and birds are mostly at risk. What are the main problems this has on the world? Climate change in general impacts a lot on the world, so like animals, will become endangered habitats of burning, decaying, and many other large impacts. Thank you, Bridget. Now for our environmental scientist, Cam. Is the environment being affected by global climate change? Environment change impacts habitats by destroying water sources and raising sea levels. What is the big threat for the animals? Habitat loss and change poses a great threat to different species. What could happen to our coral reefs? Coral bleaching is a condition that seriously damage and kill entire coral reefs. How are the rising water levels affecting certain sea animals? If the water decreases, then seals and dolphins won't be able to raise their pups in shallow enough water, so they will also won't be able to reproduce, leaving them go extinct. What is really changing in the environment that has a big impact on us? The animals' homes and habitats are being cleared for homes and sometimes natural resources. Some 20% uh, 
mammals and 12% birds. Hi Sammy, I will be asking you about how conservation problems affect climate change. Sammy, does human activity have it? anything to do with this? Human activity is responsible for the loss around half the forces that once covered the earth, which is home for animals around the world. How are weather patterns affecting this? Rapidly changing weather patterns are also disrupting growing patterns like the crops that are stable food for animals all across the world. How many habitats have been damaged by this? Important habitats for countless numbers of creatures, around 60% have been damaged. What other gases are putting an impact on our climate change? Pollution from toxic substances such as industrial chemicals, pesticides, and motor oil are also a real problem in affecting everything about the change in climate. What is the big impact this is putting on our Earth? The increasing amount of gases are being produced are destroying the Earth, which also kills off animals with harmful gases along with increasing climate climates way higher than usual, which is destroying the habitats. We would like to thank Ms. Fish for helping us all throughout the project, as well as Ms. A Flag too. We were both a big help during this project and contributed to our group. Hi, my name is Annalise Rogers, and today I'm here with Bourne Middle School's climate research team. Conservation scientist Maddie Lima, climate scientist Alicia Hernandez, and environmental scientist Tori Bowman. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. And so as you can see behind me, there's a video of global warming and shows how global warming has progressed over a period of time. And as we hear the words global warming, most of us think of ice glaciers melting in places like Alaska, Greenland, and Antarctica. So my question for you all is, how is ice glaciers melting affecting the rest of the world? Well, Earth's climate has been naturally changing for several thousand years, but human activity has sped that up. The average temperature of the Earth continues to rise due to glaciers melting. The ice glaciers absorb heat, so it maintains Earth a maintainable temperature, but as they melt, they, they, they won't be absorbed, so therefore temperatures are rising. Well, the sea level is also rising. Um, on Cape Cod, 5,760 acres of land have been submerged as of the year of 2014. The ice glaciers melting causes this to happen. Um, also, the temperature of water decreases as the sea level rises. The sea level rising is also <coughs> affecting the polar animals and other animals all over the world are affected by this change. Some animals may become extinct because they will not be able to adjust to their environmental changes as fast as they would need to. So my second question for you is, what land features and parts of the world have been affected most by these ice glaciers melting? In Antarctica, the studies have shown that in the next two centuries, global sea levels will rise four feet above sea, above sea levels. <laughs> Another place that's been severely affected is Alaska, and as you can see, this is a picture of the Miri Glacier in Alaska. The picture on the left is this glacier in 1941. It is fully covered in ice and snow. And the picture on the right is, is what it looked like in 2004, and you can clearly see the ice has melted away. Greenland has been also changing drastically. In 2010, the temperature in Greenland was an average five degrees of Fahrenheit above normal. As a result, Greenland has, Greenland's ice sheets are disappearing than any of us scientists have predicted. So how can you prove these ice sheets were melting faster than they were before? Well, we use a probe that we place in the water that measures the water as the probe travels down. But our data has shown that the lower the probe goes, the, the warmer the water gets. So the water will get warm enough, so like warm enough to potentially melt the ice. Glaciers. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's really interesting how you guys have that kind of technology to produce mm -hmm. that type of data. Well, that's all we have time for today. See you next time on Bourne Middle School's Climate Research Channel.
Welcome to Fantastic Four News. I'm Professor Alley, and today we'll be discussing global warming and the effects it has on our planet. Over the last 4.543 billion years of Earth existence, its land masses and their climates have changed drastically, from the time of Pangaea all the way to the time of our seven continents now. Climates have modified greatly, and in doing so, had many effects on our land masses, especially our islands and coasts. A very significant issue taking place in our world today is global climate change. A few scientists are here today to discuss the widespread changing matter and what you can do to help stop it. Here with me first, I have climatologist Ms. JJ. She'll be discussing the climate of the poles rising in temperature and what has caused this to happen. Of the world, that we see different amount of sunlight and have different geographic factors. That says proximity of the ocean altitude. The climate can get so cold it will freeze us in into ice caps or into deep glaciers. So what about global temperature? How is that causing sea level rise? The global temperature rises and the sun warms the sea. The more sun that heats the ice caps and glaciers melt, also leading to more rain instead of snow. Since the ice caps and the glaciers are holding so much fresh water and are melting, the sea level rises higher. Shrinking land ice is releasing water into the ocean and as ocean temperature rises, the warmer water expands. Interesting. So what are some of the examples happening now? Well, there's major rise in sea, sea levels. Manhattan, California and other coastal areas can find themselves underwater with homes, buildings, and people displaced. The Golden Gate Bridge is an icon of San Francisco, can be partially underwater as can Manhattan subways and buildings in New York City. Winter in freezing areas of Michigan, South Dakota, Alaska, and throughout the world can eventually be double winters in warm weather climate in Florida. One of our big focus on is to limit power plant pollution to target the single largest source of carbon pollution and try to reduce it largely. Thank you very much for that information and important insight, Ms. JJ. We should all surely take more notice of these climate events. And now for our environmentalist, Mr. Camden. Thank you very much for that information, Ms. JJ. We should all surely take more notice of these climate events. Thank you, Professor Alley. So as we can all assume, global climate change and the melting of our polar ice caps and affecting our continents and land. The rivalry of the ocean is diminishing coastlines and islands, resulting in most of them being completely submerged under the ocean in the near future. As seawater reaches farther inland, it can cause destructive erosion, flooding of wetlands, contamination of aquifers and agricultural soils, and lost habitats of fish, birds, and plants. When large storms hit land, higher sea levels mean more power for the storm. Storm surges that can strip away everything in their path. In addition, hundreds of millions of, the pe of people that, that live in that area will become increasingly vulnerable to flooding. Higher sea levels will, will force them to uh, abandon their homes and relocate. The temperature becomes more and warm and can affect the health of humans and the disease that they are exposed to. Here, wait, I want to stop it. Alaska's islands have also taken a major impact from global climate change, and the inhabitants of the North and South Poles are losing their homes. As the ice is melting, the space the polar bears and penguins have to live on is diminished greatly. We need the help of the animals as well as our self, future selves. If we use less natural resources and reuse plastic items, we can help reduce the harm and global climate change places on the environment. Thank you, Mr. Camden. It seems you really need to start helping our environment more by decreasing global climate change's effects. And last but not least, our conservation scientist, Ms. Mariah. Global climate change and the raising of sea level cannot be defeated, but we can reduce it. The main issue for global warming is all the chemicals and pollution going into the air from factories. These harmful chemicals go up into our sky and damage our ozone layer, causes more UV light to pass through and leads 
or surface. This all results in the melting of the polar ice caps. Humans need to realize we are at fault and start to fix the issue. If we use less fossil energies, we can help preserve our environment. Buying better bulbs is great too, like CFL bulb, 70% energy and save is a big difference. We, we, we sell bottles, plastic containers, and other items, but at their grocery store is also helpful. Another important thing is it too change the air filter in our car every month to reduce our car compound. Car, car I mean, if more people in the world start to do all these simple things, we could reduce the speed at which the poles are melting. Yes, so reusing your items that you bought at the grocery store is great, and also reducing your car, car's carbon emissions. Yeah. So what are some countries around the world doing? Well, in Asia, they have set a goal of reducing greenhouse gas by 5% below 200,000 levels by 2020. And in China, they didn't please to reduce its carbon, but they did promise to become at less 50% more energy affected by 2015. Other countries have made their plans to help climate change and it's time for the U.S. to take a similar approach. So yes, China and Australia are really doing well with the reducing their carbon emissions. And thank you so much for the information. Fantastic 14 News completely agrees with your input. I hope that the U.S. really tries to contribute in helping this important issue. We only have one planet, and we need to keep it in one piece as long as we can. Agreed. This has been Professor Alley with climatologist Ms. JJ, environmentalist Mr. Camden, and conservation scientist Ms. Mariah, signing off. Have a wonderful evening, and help stop climate change. Yeah. Destructive erosion, flooding the wetlands, contaminating <coughs> aquifers. <coughs> oh, Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Maya Show. Today, let's change our future. In our world, money has been shown to be what truly matters. However, when we have no oxygen to breathe, then we will realize money isn't what truly matters in life. We've lost sight of what truly matters, and we can't help fix our mistakes, it just takes us all to do this. We don't want to start caring before it is too late and allow our grandchildren to wear gas masks. As I worry about this, I brought in three of the best of the best scientists to convey you this message. Our climate has changed because of us. Doesn't that make you feel sad to think that we're part of the reason our world is dying? The earth has given us food, shelter, love, beauty, and life, and in return for this gift, we are killing it. Doc, now Dr. Benito, our climate scientist, will show you what climate was like in the past, what has been caused, and now what will happen to our grandchildren in the future if we keep on acting as this ignorant and oblivious race. So let us change our future. So to start this off, how has the climate changed in the last 100 years from our influence? During the last 100 years, our climate has changed dramatically. We have been experiencing temperature increases, water level rising, and dirtier air. Human activity is the main cause for these changes. For over the past century, there have been many major advancements in technology and science. What is global warming and how does it affect the climate? Global warming is the gradual average temperature increase of Earth's climate, including its atmosphere and oceans. Earth has experienced its 10 warmest years in the past century and its 20 warmest years since 1981. Also, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, has estimated a global climate increase of 2.5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit over the next century. This increase in temperature causes and will continue to cause water levels to rise and ice to melt. 
For example, over the past century, sea levels rose about 17 centimeters and double that in the past decade. This is way too big of an increase and must be slowed or stopped as soon as possible. Lastly, during the end of the last ice age, over 3,000 feet of ice covered northern United States. However, today, no ice exists here. What causes the temperature to increase and melt the ice at the poles? The ice on Earth is melting at a more constant rate due to the burning of natural resources, the cutting of trees, and the pollution of fresh air. All of these factors lead to the temperature increases and the water level rising. First of all, trees absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen. This is a process called photosynthesis. As the amount of trees on our planet decrease, less carbon dioxide is being photosynthesized into oxygen, which leads to an increase in gas. We need to slow down the rate at which we cut down our trees to keep our planet filled with life-giving oxygen and cleaner air. Also, with less carbon dioxide, our atmosphere will cool and the rate at which our ice is melting will decrease. Also, we are polluting our air via smog from our factories. In large production factories, like in Japan and China, large quantities of carbon dioxide are being released into the atmosphere. When carbon dioxide chemically reacts with sunlight, it produces a combination of smoke and fog called smog. When there is too much smog in the atmosphere, it can be very dangerous for humans and makes it very difficult to breathe. For example, According to the British Broadcasting Corporation, on December 24, 2015, a smog red alert was sent out to the public of China. This alerted all people to avoid outdoor activities, and all school classes were canceled. As you can see, smog makes it difficult to breathe and difficult to go about everyday life. Lastly, when we burn carbon-based fuels like coal and oil, incompletely or inefficiently, it, it can produce a gas called carbon monoxide, which poorly affects the atmosphere's ability to cleanse other gases. These gases include greenhouse gases, which, although keep Earth warm, need to be cleansed out. So as more and more enter the atmosphere and are not being efficiently cleansed, they will build up and the atmosphere will continue to increase in temperature. What are the resources we are burning and what do we release into the air? The main resources we are using up at a faster and faster rate are petroleum, fossil fuels, natural gas, and coal. The constant burning of these releases carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere, which trap heat in our atmosphere. These are called greenhouse gases. As more and more greenhouse gases enter the atmosphere as in large quantities, they will continue to cause ice to melt and water levels to rise. This is mainly what is causing global warming. Are we affecting our environment with this? That would be a question for our environmental scientist, Dr. Rady. Dr. Rady, please come out. Hello, everyone. So as I said to Dr. Benito, are we affecting our environment with this? Today I'm here to talk to you about for, uh, deforestation, the loss of trees and all vegetation. The result of us doing this is cutting down all the habitats and moving animals out of their environment, out of their habitat. We are risking the, all the species of Earth. By doing this, we are endangering them. We are endangering them. We've killed many species so far with deforestation. If we keep acting like we are now and that becomes much worse over time, could we potentially lose our planet? What have you got in mind for things we can do, Dr. Doucette? Well, um, well, there are many solutions that can work really well, but I got three for you that, uh, that I think are most helpful. First, we could have the factories that are created, uh, that create um, electricity through friction between copper and zinc. This would be a substitute for fossil fuels in order to create en energy for homes and other things. The machine would rotate constantly, moving the zinc across the copper, creating the friction needed to, um, to create electricity. Uh, this can totally downgrade our use of fossil fuels with powering mechanical structures. Second, we can have cars that run on uh, fermented watermelon juice. It creates a biofuel called bioethanol, which is a ma major component in, in fueling cars. Other types of biofuel are biogas, biohydrogen, biodiesel, and synthetic biofuels. This way also provides a close to unlimited source of fuel for cars because watermelons can be regrown. It will majorly decrease the expenditure on gasoline, and in the long run, it will make it so that 
uh, we can use more, we'll have more gasoline over time. Third and finally, if we can just manage to do it, we can stop being greedy and cutting down the trees. I know it doesn't sound like much, but this will increase the years our Earth has to live by an extreme amount. More plants to take, to take in our ever-growing source of carbon dioxide and um, turn it into oxygen we can breathe. This would create a huge change in Earth and in the life on it. This teaches us to take responsibility. It is all of us impacting our world in the wrong way. You are not turning off your lights, the granola bar wrappers you throw on the ground, the toxic gases released from your car. It is you. It is all of you, us, causing this. Look outside and see our world. We can't enjoy the polluted air, the animals dying from our litter, the trash piled at the dumps, the barren forests, and the extinct species. So let us enjoy our world. Don't say anything is impossible but because we can all do it. And everything you do in a day doesn't have to be big, it can be small. As a whole, if we all recycle, use less fuel, causing less emissions into the air, don't litter, and use less electricity, it can be huge to our planet. The more people who help, the bigger the impact is. Unless you want all life to crumble, do it. The world needs it. We don't have much time, so don't wait until tomorrow. Start today. We can get to that day where our future is changed. Thank you all of you who have helped and thank you all who have helped so much and thank you to everyone who made this show possible. Goodbye everyone and please start changing our world with us today. The best of the best. Thank you for having me here. I will be asking you a few questions and if matter has increased dramatically due to human activity. First of all, I will be asking you your opinion on if climate has dramatically increased due to human activity. In my opinion, I truly believe that climate has changed due to human activities. Throughout the years, humans have deforested the land due to their usage of the land. I have done some research and have came up with this theory. Do you agree greenhouse gases have a major cause in climate change? Well, I know that as fossil fuels burn, it increases the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which causes air to rise more than it would from natural processes. Could there be a solution to this matter? Yes, there could be. If we started to eliminate the amount of fossil fuels, the emission of greenhouse gases would be less severe. Also, if we stopped cutting down trees, there would be a better ratio of carbon dioxide and oxygen. Could you explain this further? Of course. When humans cut down trees, there is more carbon dioxide than oxygen in the air, which makes the earth hotter. I, had never, I never knew that. Do you think climate hate change has increased through natural-based approaches? Yes, climate change has enhanced the benefits nature provides to humans, clean air, fresh water, fisheries, pollination, recreation, climate, and flood control. Also, it improves the abilities of wildlife and people to adapt to the rapidly changing climate. I could talk about this for hours, but I know you have others to speak to. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for speaking with me. Now over to Connor, the head scientist who will be speaking with us on the top of Mount Washington. Hi, I am Connor, the head scientist at the Climate Agency in New Hampshire. I am up on Mount Washington, studying the climate changes throughout the day. I have to ask you a few questions. Could you explain how humans may affect climate change? Yes, well data shows that Earth's temperature has increased due to gases in the air. This is mainly the burning of fossil fuels which releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The greenhouse gases affect the climate by altering solar radiation and outgoing infrared radiation. Have you researched any information for the past years? Yes, it all began during the Nice day on here at yeah. Boston Harbor. Okay, let me ask you a few questions. What's your opinion on if climate has, in, has changed due to humans? I believe that humans are the cause of climate change. Throughout my research, I've noticed that records are revealing takeovers of native vegetation happening. What about if climate change is a major threat to agriculture? 
agriculture contributes to greenhouse gas increase through low use. For example, CO2, otherwise known as methane emissions, and nitrogen oxide is how these greenhouse gases are used. Also, activities like agriculture and road construction can lead to this. Could you explain this further? Change can be caused by shifts in the agricultural poles. Changes in this production matters due to the higher temperature and boosts in the agricultural productivity due to the increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Could you tell me how third world countries are affected by the environment? Third world countries are affected by what goes on there, such as unsafe water, poor hygiene, and cause of infectious diseases. So third world countries are affected because of their environment? Yes. Is there anything else? Of course, when salt ice trap permits, the water, the fresh water, goes into the ocean, which causes problems with the ocean circulation. They change because the fresh water mixes with the salt water, which causes the fresh water to go on top and causes the salt water to stay on the bottom. Wrapping everything up, what are the solutions to climate change? If people begin to walk, use public transport, plant gardens, pump up trash, and use solar energy, and also stop cutting down trees, we wouldn't have any of these problems. Thank you for speaking with me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> that will be it on KNLC News. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Uh, hi. It's, uh, it's Nate Bag, the, uh, the editor, talking. This screen's probably black, so I'll put something up there. Ready? Boom! Alright, you can enjoy whatever that is. I would just like to give recognition to Mrs. Fish for allowing this newscast to happen, and our teacher, Miss A. Flag, who we, uh, couldn't have done this without her help. Uh, yeah. I guess you can clap now. Enjoy.